Hi, I'm James Hamilton from Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal, and today we're going to change the way you look at your router bits. Do you ever look at your router bits and wish you had more options? I'm talking about the profile bits, the one you use to decorate the edge of a workpiece or to make small moldings. The most common are the OGs, and there are many variations. These come in most router bit sets, and they look nice enough, but over time, you may just grow tired of using the same profiles over and over again, or you may feel that the profiles that you have don't really fit the style or the size of the project that you're working on. Well, did you know that you can make almost any profile you want, from a simple OG to a complex crown molding, with just a few common bits? This is because molding profiles are little more than a collection of coves, beads, and flats, or fillets. All those fancy moldings you see on period furniture were originally cut one cove, bead, or fillet at a time using what were called cove or hollow round and rabbit planes. If you had enough of these planes, you could make any molding you could draw. But today's woodworkers don't have these planes. Instead, they use the modern day equivalent, router bits that cut similar basic shapes. So in place of the hollow or cove plane, we have the core box bit. Round planes had been replaced with roundover bits to cut beads, and we use straight bits to cut the fillets. With just a few of these three bit types, you can cut almost any molding profile you can imagine. Now let's start with some simple profiles. Most OGs and other semi-complex profile bits, the ones you find in your sets, they're designed to be used with a three quarter inch edge. That makes sense because most hobbyist woodworkers buy their material off the shelf in standard three quarter inch thicknesses. But not every edge and every piece of furniture you will ever make will be three quarters of an inch thick. And not every molding even looks good in that size. One of these days, you'll wish you had a larger version of a bit that you have in your set, like the OG. You could go out and spend about a hundred bucks on a giant version of the OG bit, if you could find one. Or you can just cut that large OG with bits that you may already have. You see, an OG is simply a bead which is cut with a roundover bit, next to a cove which is cut with a core box bit. If you leave a little flat spot between the cove and the bead, you have what's called a classical OG. If you leave a flat at the top and the bottom, you have an OG double fillet. By cutting these common profiles with core box and roundover bits, you can make them any size you like, small, medium, or large. Besides changing the scale of a profile, you can also modify its form to create a truly custom look. Take the classical OG for example. These bits typically cut a 5 16 inch cove and a 5 16 inch round separated by a 1 16 fillet. What if you reduced the cove to 3 16 and then you enlarged the round to a half inch? That would dramatically change the profile. You could do the opposite too, placing the smaller cove above a larger round. Another option would be to keep both the cove and the round to the same size, but elongate the cove with a few extra passes over a router bit that you raise incrementally each time. These small changes can significantly modify a profile. And don't forget, you can also scale these new profiles to larger sizes if you need. Once you start creating your own versions of common profiles, you're going to want to take it a step further and begin designing your own unique profiles. To illustrate this point, I selected three roundover bits and two core box bits. Within a relatively short period of time, I was able to produce 25 different edge profiles. I'm certain that I could have come up with many more, especially if I hadn't limited myself to just three quarter inch thick material, and if I had used all the bits in my collection, the possibilities would have been nearly endless. My point is, with just a handful of core box, roundover, and straight bits, you can dramatically change the way your edges and moldings look. And as your collection of these types of bits grow, so will your ability to cut even the most complex crown moldings. That's where these bits really pay off. But we'll discuss that in another video. In the meantime, be sure to subscribe below and check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal for more tutorials, tips, and tricks designed to make you a better woodworker. You can read and subscribe for free at stumpydubs.com. Happy molding!